There was a wonderful man that God put upon the earth named Joseph. He was a favorite child. You got to watch that if you're a favorite child, especially if you got brothers and sisters that don't think you're too favorite. But it's like in, in every family. How many of you had a favorite uncle? And yet you had other uncles. And an uncle is an uncle, don't misunderstand me. But it just seemed like sometime that might be one that was just, I don't know, just, ah. Just something unique about that person. How many of you had a favorite aunt? How many of you had some nasty aunts? <laughs> nasty uncles? <laughs> You know what I'm trying to say. But it just seems like favoritism follows some people. There's a reason for it. It's because of their heart. Yet favoritism sometimes shows up and sometimes we don't know how to handle it, especially with an older brother or an older sister. They think you might get too much attention or whatever, and, uh, and, and that may be true. Because no one should, you shouldn't have a favorite child. But let's just face it, sometimes we do. Now, I can never say that, because I only have one. And she is my favorite child. And I only have one granddaughter. She is my favorite granddaughter. I told Kathy this, I think it was yesterday, the day before. I said, me and Kathy are like dogs. I mean, if you want an image of a dog, you look at me and Kathy. Because when Meredith comes over, we can spend a whole weekend with her, okay? Have one of a time. Now, why is it? Her mama picks her up, drives to her house. Her mother's house is only a half a mile from my house. Uh, that's it. That might be stretching it. And Meredith forgot to bring, uh, she forgot to take her clothes home. So Jody turns around and comes back to pick up the clothes. When Meredith comes in to pick, it's, it's like we hadn't seen in 50 years. <laughs> Don't that sound like a dog? I mean, a dog maybe just look at it. You've been there all day. You walk out for two minutes. <laughs> the dog goes, <laughs> <laughs> me and Kathy are dogs. It starts that way. Joseph was the favorite child of Jacob because he had a favorite wife. That's another thing you shouldn't do. Shout, ladies, I just set you free. Which means this. Nobody should ever say if you got a divorce. Where's your first wife? You know the pretty one? Don't say that. Because that means that this wife might have, she's thinking, well, I ain't pretty. No, no, there's just there's some things you don't say. But God had a purpose and a plan for Joseph. His brothers threw him in a pit. And I'm giving you a preamble to this message. He was sold to Egypt at 17 years old. He lived 110 years. He was in Egypt 83 years. And of those years, he became prime minister. But it came to a point in life where he would die. If Jesus tarries, we're going to come to a point in life that we're going to die. And it's not a bad thing. Because you can have what I call a good death. And I want to talk about wanted, dead, or alive. And if you've got your Bible, Genesis chapter 50, verse 24. And Joseph said unto his brethren, and I'm reading out of the King James verses, I die, and God will surely visit you. Underline that in your scripture. God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Now, when I read that, I put myself, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Jesus, Jesse. Because you see, I got a promised land. You have a promised land. Now, J Joseph said, I, I, I want it dead or I want it alive. In other words, I'm going to have this promised land. And Joseph took an oath. Now, he's serious. He made him swear before Elohim, Jehovah, Jireh, took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you. Notice he had to say it twice. And you shall carry up my bones from hence. In other words, I am not destined to stay here. Dead or alive. 
Now, most people would have stayed there because when you're the prime minister, you got all the money, you're controlling everybody. Why would you go anywhere else? And there are a lot of people like that today that have everything, but they're not in their promised land. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Notice he wasn't put in a grave. Because he made an oath, made those people swear. Now go with me to Exodus chapter 13. Exodus means exodus. Means when the nation of Israel leaves. Exodus chapter 13. Verse 19. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. Why? For he had straightly sworn the children of Israel saying. God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones all away hence with you. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time Exodus 13 and 19 took place from Genesis 50, 26 was 360 years. His coffin or mummy, whatever you want to call it, in the Egyptian days, was on view for 360 years as a sign to Israel. I don't care how long it's going to take, it's going to take, but you got another place that you're going to. Wanted, dead or alive. So write this down if you take your notes. You must have faith in your magnificent future. He had such faith, talking about Joseph, in the magnificent future of the nation of Israel that he refused to be buried. Do what you have to do, but keep me as a signpost because there's coming a day when you will walk out of this into your promised land as a free nation. Free. Free from what? Free from bondage. Free. Why do you think I preach debt free? You're you're looking at the word debt. I'm looking at the word free. You see what I'm saying? I want you free. Because you see, there's someone that can lord over you. And you can buy a home and mortgage it for 30 years. And be living in that house for 29 years and 8 months and your husband or you get sick and you cannot pay the last 4 months of notes they will take that house away from you even though you've paid for it 3 times free that's why I keep telling the people here at Covenant Church and all my partners all over the world that are watching we want you free I want you free from sickness. That's why we don't give up. That's why when somebody is dying, we say, by his stripes, you are healed. You either get free here or you get free there, but you're going to get free. But I prefer it to be here. Now, why did it take 360 years for them to finally take his bones out? Watch this. And they could have been in a promised land 360 years later in 11 days. They were free, and God took them around the long way instead of the short way. Why? Because they didn't have a faith to fight a battle. They just had faith enough to be free. And yet the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on to eternal life. So you must have faith in your magnificent future. Now write this down. Little thinkers will never understand big thinkers. Little thinkers will never understand big thinkers. Most little thinkers would have said, we ain't going nowhere. It's been a century, and we still see that mummy. Let's put it in the grave. But Joseph was a big thinker to the point that he swore, made them swear an oath. You break this oath. You break your covenant with God. You cease to be covenant people. 
That's why I want all the promises of God. That's why God didn't say some. He said all. You know how many are there? There are over 7,000 of them. Why don't you go pick one today and get it? Over 7,000 promises. But the church has never preached promises. They preached compromise. They added C-O-M to the word promise, which is compromise. Three letters changed the whole thing. I'm going to have everything I ever wanted, needed, or desire. I'll get it dead or I'll get it alive, but I'm going to get it. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.